Hello, friends. You know, I have a unique way of looking at things. I have always been uh, the analytical type. I always, and I do mean always, want to know more about the complexities of everything in our world. People, places, things, just life in general. I dig deep and I look for answers and I want to know the truth. And if my parents were alive, they could tell you stories about how I was the living embodiment of the old idiom, curiosity causes terminal harm to the feline. I can't say it the normal way because my video will get tagged and taken down. In addition to curiosity, I have always had a problem with what I call overly arrogant authority. I won't always challenge arrogant authority. I will always challenge those who tell me I'm wrong and will willfully and firmly stand up to anyone who calls me a liar or tells me that I'm a fool for believing what I know to be the truth. With that, let me ask you something. Which of these two cars uses the most energy to go from point A to point B? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, I'm actually getting ahead of myself. We'll, we'll examine that in a few minutes. But let me ask you this question. Have you ever heard the myth that EVs are just energy hogs in disguise? Or the myth that says, we simply don't have enough electrical grid to support a nation full of electric vehicles. These types of myths are perpetuated and bolstered here on YouTube every single day by, well, you know, the people who they are. There are those out there who would have you believe that the gas in your tank gets there by pure magic and pixie dust. But let's move on. What if I told you that it takes as much energy to refine one single gallon of gasoline than it would take to drive an EV 20 to 25 miles? Again, more energy just to refine a gallon of gas than it takes to move an EV 20 to 25 miles. Yep, you, you heard me right. As much energy. Before that one single gallon of gas touches the tank, it has already used the same energy it would take to drive an EV on an average daily commute. And yet there are those who ignorantly call electric vehicles the most inefficient vehicles on the road. But is that really ignorance or is it arrogance? Let's walk through this and I'll let you decide. First, let's start out with what it takes to make a single gallon of gasoline usable in the first place. According to the Argonne National Laboratory's GREET model, one of the most widely used models in the energy life cycle analysis, it takes about six kilowatt hours of energy to deliver just one single gallon of gasoline. Let that number roll around for just, just a minute. Six kilowatt hours is enough to drive a Tesla Model 3, a Hyundai Ioniq 5, or even the Equinox EV about 20 to 25 miles, depending on your driving style. So when people say EVs shift emissions to the power grid, which is true, I ask, what do you think powers oil refineries? People making good luck wishes and pixie dust? Refining is only one part of the wells-to-wheels process that's necessary to fuel the insatiable thirst of the internal combustion engine. You've got oil rigs that drill deep into the earth, pumps and separators that process the crude, compressors and pipeline stations that push that crude hundreds of miles to refineries, and every one of those stages runs on either electricity, diesel, or natural gas. Natural gas can actually be used to generate electricity. We already know that because 40% of the power in the U.S. comes from natural gas generators. And then we transport the refined gasoline via trucks, trains, and 
more pipelines, to thousands of stations across the country. This takes even more diesel and more electricity. And once the gasoline or diesel is at the station, it takes, well, guess what? More electricity to pump it from the tank in the ground to the tank in the vehicle. A study in energy policy found that the full upstream process from extraction to refining and distribution consumes between 20 and 30 percent of the fuel's energy content, period. That means nearly one-third of the potential energy in every gallon of gasoline is already lost before you even start the car. And once it's in your tank, your internal combustion engine burns that gallon with about 20 to 30 percent efficiency, wasting the rest as heat. So we're literally losing energy on both ends of the equation. But let's step back for just a minute and look at this with fresh eyes. Eyes that aren't watering from the pollutants coming out of the millions of exhaust pipes that are polluting our air continually. We are burning coal and natural gas to create electricity. About 50% of our electricity in the U.S. comes from coal and natural gas. That electricity is then used to refine gasoline. Then we burn that gasoline in cars where most of it becomes heat. It's like boiling water to melt snow. So you can use that water to fill a leaky bucket. And then someone has the audacity, or is it arrogance, to tell you that electric cars are wasteful? Even more, they tell you that we don't have enough electricity to fuel the EV, and we will have to expand the grid. That logic does not hold up under scrutiny. It's actually ludicrous to think that way. Now let's talk about how much refining and del the delivery process costs in terms of real, actual dollars. As of 2024, the average price of electricity in the U.S. was about 17.3 cents per kilowatt hour, according to the Energy Information Administration. We don't have the 2025 numbers yet. They should be out here within the next four to six weeks. We're going to use that 17.3 cent and take the six kilowatt hours it takes to deliver a single gallon of gasoline, multiply that by 17.3 cents, and we come out with a dollar and four cent worth of electricity just to make the gas usable so it can be burned, and most of that burn is wasted as heat. I know I'm beating a dead horse. I've been driving that home, so to speak. Over one dollar per gallon is spent before it even gets to your gas tank. And now picture this. You're driving a car that gets 25 miles per gallon. You're effectively spending over a dollar in electricity to go 25 miles, plus the price of the gas itself. Now, imagine you drive a Tesla Model 3, a Hyundai Ioniq 5, or an Equinox EV, and get those same 25 miles using the same dollar and four cent worth of electricity directly into your battery. But guess what? There's no smoke, there's no middlemen, there's no second burn, there's no wasted electricity pumping the elect, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, you can't pump electricity. It's just pure, unadulterated efficiency. It's almost like good luck, wishes, and pixie dust, but it's not. It's reality and it's physics. Now I'm going to be even more honest with you. Let me say this very, very simply. Electric vehicles aren't perfect. Nothing is. But they are shockingly efficient in comparison to the internal combustion engine. They draw power straight from the grid, or even from your solar panels, and convert 90% of that electricity, that power, into motion. Motion from point A to point B. There's no refining, there's no drilling, there's no rail cars full of flammable liquids, nothing in your tank that'll explode, nothing to overheat under your hood. Just you, your EV, and the freedom to choose where your electricity comes from. You want zero emissions? Just plug into wind or solar or hydro or nuclear. But if you drive a gasoline car, you will always, and I mean always, be burning something. That's just the way it is.
Now let's move back to the beginning. I ask you which of these two cars over here used the most energy. Well, let's examine that in detail, shall we? The 2025 Chevrolet Equinox internal combustion engine version is powered by gasoline. It has a tank capacity of 15.6 gallons. Fill it up and it's ready to roll. It has a 1.5 liter turbo four-cylinder engine mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission. It gets 27 miles per gallon. You can drive 421 miles on that full tank of gas. That's not bad. Now let's compare that to the 2025 Chevrolet Equinox EV that's powered by 100% electricity. You fill the battery to capacity, and the battery capacity is 85 kilowatt hours, and it'll go a maximum of 319 miles, giving it an efficiency of 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. That is a fantastic number. But now we're going to answer two questions. Before either of these cars rolls away from their fill-up, which one has used the most energy? And after both cars run out of fuel, which one has used the most energy? The energy or electricity potential that it takes to make one gallon of gasoline to drive the Equinox 27 miles is 6 kilowatt hours. As a reminder, I said at the beginning of this video, on average, a single gallon of gasoline takes enough energy to refine it that it would take to power an electric vehicle 20 to 25 miles. But for now, we're just going to keep this simple. So to fill the Equinox ice-powered car with gasoline has already taken 93.6 kilowatt hours of energy to drive a maximum of 421 miles. Filling the Equinox EV has only taken 85 kilowatt hours of energy to drive 319 miles. But now let's drive both until they are empty. When empty, the Equinox gas-powered version has burned the 15.6 gallons of gasoline, each gallon re representing about 33.7 kilowatt hours. You must add the 6 kilowatt hours it took to create that gasoline to come up with the true number which now is about 39.7 kilowatt hours per gallon times 15.6, which means you have used 619.32 kilowatt hours of energy. Th that gives the Equinox internal combustion engine version about 0.68 miles per kilowatt hour. Meanwhile, you drive the Equinox EV to empty, that's 319 miles, and you've only used 85 kilowatt hours of energy, and that's still 3.75 miles per kilowatt hour. That means the Equinox EV is 5.5 times more energy efficient than the Equinox internal combustion engine version. The math is simple. You take 3.75 kilowatt hours, divide that by 0.68 kilowatt hours, and you come up with 5.5. Now let's talk about the greenhouse gas of carbon dioxide. The math is even more horrible for the internal combustion engine. 6 kilowatt hours per gallon times the 0.85 pounds per kilowatt hour, which is the energy mix for the USA, and you get 5.15 or 5.1 pounds of CO2 to make the one gallon of gas. Then when you burn that gallon of gas, you've burned 19.5 pounds of CO2. You add the 19.5 to the 5.1, and you've got 24.6 pounds of CO2 per gallon of gasoline. That means 15.6 gallons burned equals 391.14 pounds of CO2. That means after driving 421 miles, you're putting out 0.929 pounds of CO2 per mile. Equinox is easy. You've only made 69.7 pounds of CO2. You divide that and it comes out to 0.218 pounds of CO2 per mile. That means that the CO2 production is 4.26 times less in the EV than it is the gas-powered vehicle. So I'm going to summarize it like this. The Equinox is 
the Equinox EV is 5.5 times more energy efficient and 4.26 times less polluting than the Equinox internal combustion engine version. That's a fair comparison. Here's a question, and it isn't rhetorical. It's genuine. Which e Equinox in this equation is the real energy hog, and which one is most polluting? The proof is in the numbers, and the numbers don't lie. So why are we still doing this the old-fashioned way? The fossil fuel industry doesn't want you to think about this. They just don't. They don't want you asking, what does it cost to make a gallon of gas before you even pay for it? Or how much energy is consumed in the path that takes it from the well to your tank? But now we've talked about it, and you know it's real simple. So the next time someone says EVs shift the problem to the power plant, you can ask them, how do you think the gas got from the drill site to your car in the first place? And you can also say, was it funky magic and pixie dust? As for me, I'm game to chat and debate this finding with anyone, anytime, anywhere. Remember that the next time you see someone bloviating about how bad EVs are and how people like me are lying to you about them. In the interim, I invite you to refute the math or change the laws of physics. Why? Because it is impossible to argue with the basic math and the fundamental laws of physics and thermodynamics. Those don't change. And these same influencers dare not talk to you about the tons of cobalt, yes, that rare earth mineral they condemn in EVs, that is consumed every year in the refining process. But that's another story for another time, I suppose, and I'll get to it. And uh, uh, one more thing. I'm sure someone will comment about the energy used to make the EV. Yes, it is more to make the EV than an internal combustion engine car. But by the time these cars have traveled 20 to 25,000 miles, the energy is evened out. And the ICE car can never catch up after that. As manufacturing processes for batteries green up and lean out, there will soon be equilibrium and that argument will end instantly. I'm sure there will be many negative comments in the comments section. There always is. There's at least one anti-EV person that must make a post to flex their intellect. All I ask is that you do not make this personal. What I have reported in this video is empirical and it's measurable. My sources are in the description below. Feel free to check them out. But know this, the numbers don't lie. I welcome all kinds of pushback all kinds of challenges to the math and to the physics, but stay on topic. And again, please don't make this personal. Don't attack me, because if you do, I'm going to ban you from the channel. It's as simple as that. Until next time, I'll see you out there or somewhere along the route from point A to point B. And keep driving electric. Take it easy, everybody. See you all real soon.